The UAE announced this year its Net Zero 2050 initiative and will host COP28 next year and meeting to act on climate change. As a flag carrier of the UAE, what do you see as Etihad's role in these landmark moves? What's your mandate when it comes to decarbonizing and advancing this future? Well, I think everybody is so excited about COP28 being in Abu Dhabi. And I think it gives an aiming point as well for the many additional proof points to show as thought leaders in the commercial aviation space what we can do. You know, net zero um, is a reality. And of course, therefore, smart mobility is clean mobility. And uh, Etihad's been doing a, an awful lot of work to be able to deliver the promise that we've made to be net zero by 2050 and to have a 50% reduction by 2035. But I think most people would accept that it's one of the more challenging sectors to take a target like that because, of course, the physics of aviation mean that reducing carbon is something that's easy discussed but really difficult to fulfill. And of course, in a market where there's a continued growth of demand. So it's a really challenging one. But nonetheless, we've made some significant steps and we've made some big uh, progress with programs like our Greenliner, which is a 787 aircraft, and now the addition of the Sustainable 50, which is an Airbus A350, which we've been using as flying test beds to bring sustainable aviation fuels, smarter uh, aviation route planning, the elimination of single-use plastics, and many other technologies with lots of partners because there's no silver bullet out there when it comes to commercial aviation sustainability but we've made an awful lot of progress over the last two years but importantly as you say with COP28 coming up in the next couple of years we've got to make sure that we can deliver on our promises. And I love seeing the green liner anytime it takes to the art. Is there any uh, timeline on expanding that fleet or seeing it come out of test bed? So the green line has been for us the poster child um, of the program to date. And as I mentioned, the reason why I was so happy to add another aircraft type, the A350 to it as well. But we did a really important flight at the back end of last year, which was an eco demonstration flight from London Heathrow to Abu Dhabi. And this one was where we tried to connect all the dots together. All of the initiatives over the previous two years is to put them all together on one big flight. Now the takeout from it was nothing short of extraordinary. There was an 85% reduction in emissions. And that of course is staggering. I have to say it slowly so people don't think that they've misheard. It came from four things in particular. Number one, the equivalent flight in 2019 was an A380. So it was larger, it was heavier, it didn't have the same fuel burn characteristics. The second part of it is we use 38% sustainable aviation fuel SAF. And the reason why we use 38%, we wanted 50%, we simply couldn't procure any more in the marketplace at this particular time. The third part of it is optimum flight planning. So the best route, the most direct route, and in particular, a continuous descent. That took 40 minutes out of the flight time and saved over six tons of CO2. And the fourth and final big component of this was the condensation trails that we see in the sky when we look up sometimes and see the white lines that follow aeroplanes. We used a really smart piece of predictive technology that looked at barometric pressure, temperature and weather patterns to be able to adjust the flight altitude and direction to reduce the condensation trails because there's a big carbon uh, dioxide um, footprint that goes with them. Add all of that together, massive benefit. But here's the takeout. In terms of the sustainable aviation fuel, it's not repeatable because there simply isn't enough of it. And it's three times more expensive than normal aviation fuel. 
The other thing is the flight planning is not repeatable without a massive change in regulators and government's decision making. But I think what this does give us is the confidence that the solutions here if we collaborate and work hard together. OK, so that does get into my next question. That all sounds great. You highlighted some clear hurdles to fuel supply and you know, industry collaboration, but aviation industry, a famously hard to abate industry. So what are the big challenges you're seeing and where is investment in innovation best placed at this time? And what are you doing at Etihad to overcome the challenges? So I mentioned the two testbed programs and of course they're big collaborations with Boeing and General Electric, with Airbus and Rolls-Royce. But it's really about changing behavior and in the way in which we change behavior, it's around having conscious choices. And this week at the Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week, we're absolutely delighted to be launching a green loyalty program. It's a world first that's called Conscious Choices. Now, what does that mean? It allows us through the 8 million members of Etihad guests to give them the opportunity now to be able to be rewarded in how environmentally conscious they are in the choices that they make and also with corporates in particular. The way in which therefore they collect uh, Etihad guest miles allows them to be traded into carbon offsets or into buying into sustainable aviation fuel which they can then take the carbon credit for. So we've deliberately put a programme together now that touches everybody who uses commercial airlines, if they choose to fly with Etihad, if they are signed into the Conscious Choices Green Loyalty Program, it allows them to be able to offset and contribute to their environmental sustainability agendas as well. And for us, this is about a bigger part of creating a conscious behavioural change. OK, so you're talking about really pushing the choices back onto the consumer. But what, do you, what responsibility do you think corporations and boards actually have in supporting these global emissions reductions targets? And where would you actually like to see more activity in addition to, of course, just customer awareness and customer behavior? And, and it really is the reason why uh, Conscious Choices has got a corporate program to it. So let's imagine you're uh, a bank or you are an international consultancy uh, or a big conglomerate and you choose to travel a lot through necessity. What we're offering now through corporate choices is the way in which there can be an optional environmental surcharge. There's an ability, as I said before, to invest in sustainable aviation fuel or on carbon offsets, all of which are accredited, which allows you then to be able to claim that back um, as your part three element of the way in which your sustainability and the footprint that you create is measured. So we see it as a win-win. If you choose to fly with Etihad, you get the benefit of buying into a scheme of that nature, which of course plays to your sustainability agenda. But with us, we'd like to think as a thought leader in this space, enables us to work together in pursuing getting sustainable aviation fuel into a volume production phase because realistically, back to the targets that have been set for carbon neutrality by 2050, an alternative fuel source will probably contribute about 80% of that challenge. So working together, the collaboration, the change to behavior through conscious choices for us is a big part of the solution. Okay, so what I'm hearing from you is fuel. The big, the big magic bullet here is fuel, but I wanna, my last question, as you look ahead, I want to look ahead for the last question. When you think about the intersection of sustainability and the future of air travel, I wanna know what you're actually envisioning. Take us to a travel experience a decade from now, just briefly. So in a decade's time, the technology won't have fundamentally changed because of what we're talking about, the physics associated with commercial aviation and product life cycles. But what we do believe is more environmentally friendly fuel sources, those that have got a lower carbon footprint will be a big part of the solution. But the kind of things I mentioned before, we're using aircraft now that are significantly more efficient than previous types. 
they're composite structured, they're using modern engines which are a lot more efficient, but using predictive technologies in terms of how you optimise the performance of them. But a big part of this comes back to the conscious choices proposition I mentioned before, because carbon offsetting will have to be a part of it for the next decade. But further out to 2050, I think we'll also see some breakthroughs in the fundamental technology investments as well. Tony Douglas, great to talk to you. Thank you.